together with us this morning. Aren't you thankful that Jesus is alive? He's alive and well, and he's in control today.
Yes, Jesus Christ is alive. He rose from the dead, and that day, that Easter Sunday morning, that first Easter, when Mary and Mary Magdalene and Salome went to the grave expecting to anoint a dead body, they saw the angel sitting there, and they said, where is Jesus? The angel said, he is not here, he is risen. I submit to you tonight that that's the greatest news the world has ever heard. He is not here. He has conquered the grave. He's alive.
King of glory. The King of glory rescued me. Oh, one more time. The King of glory. The King of glory rescued me. How beautiful the mercy How merciful the love show. The King of glory.
thrown away Tell me where for I am free It's thrown away It's thrown away He is risen He is risen And the storm Hey guys, thank you so much for joining us right here at Unity Church Magnolia Online. I would like to give you three different ways that you can give today. The first way is to give online. Included with the live stream on Facebook or on YouTube, you can click on the link and that will take you to our online giving page. You can also visit our website at www.ucmagnolia.com. The second way is to mail your checks in to our post office box. The third way is to simply call the church office, 870-234-3225. Thank you so much for being willing to invest in the kingdom of God through giving at Unity Church Magnolia. We believe that this is good soil and every seed that is planted will produce a harvest. Continue to be faithful to God in your time, your talent, and your treasure during this pandemic in our nation. And we believe that God is going to help the kingdom of God continue to advance in this area and across the world. Thank you so much and God bless you. Hey, good morning, and thank you for joining us right here at Unity Church Online. I hate that we can't be face-to-face -face this morning, but I'm so thankful for the ability for us to connect with one another through live stream this morning. Today, I'm going to speak a message entitled, Easter Upside Down. Easter Upside Down. We are celebrating the fact that Jesus Christ rose on the third day giving us life and power and grace and everything that we need to succeed in our walk with Him. Luke chapter 4, verse 18 through 19 says this, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Would you pray with me this morning? Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word. We thank you that it is alive and well and sharper than a double-edged sword. And God, today I pray for every person that's listening this morning, God, that you will speak to their hearts and change their lives. In Jesus' name, everybody shout it. Amen. Amen. You see, Jesus lived, died, and he rose again in order to turn your life upside down. He loved the unlovable. He freed the oppressed. He delivered the possessed. He healed the sick. He gave sight to the blind. He raised the dead. He gave hope to the hopeless and power to the powerless. 
And then he looked at his disciples and he said, the best part about it is you will do even greater things than these. I believe that God's speaking that to you this morning. He is wanting to turn your world upside down. Whatever you need from God today, he is willing to turn your world upside down so that you can do even greater things for those around you. You see, we have all been commissioned to do greater things for God, and we can do that because he rose again with power and authority, and he gave that to you and me. This morning, I want to look at some of the lives that Jesus turned upside down. The first one is Judas. I thought he was the one. We all thought he was the one. Everyone did. There was a party and we were all, we were all there and, and some woman comes in and she has a bottle of perfume, a, a expensive perfume and she just pours it all over him. She did that because she thought he was the one. What a waste. We could have sold that perfume and used the money for a greater purpose. I tried to tell him as much, but he came back at me insinuating that he was the purpose. Even so, I believed he was the one. I believed that he was gonna turn everything upside down. I, 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 just, I just knew it. I mean, people would have followed him anywhere. All he had to do was just say the word, but he wouldn't say the word. Instead, he, my time has not yet come. That's what he would say over and over to me. My time has not yet come. Are you kidding me? He was raising people from the dead for crying out loud. He was healing the blind, producing food out of thin air. My time has not yet come. So I forced his hand. I made his time come. Things needed to push, and I was the only one that had the courage to do it. We were all up there eating. We were all up there. He looks across the table to me, and he says, get on with it. How, how did he know what I was going to do? It wasn't about the money. It was not about the money. It's just when you have that kind of power that he has, why wouldn't you leverage it to forward, to forward the agenda? People listen to him. You know the sound a wave makes after it hits the shore? And how quiet it gets after a few seconds when it stops. That was Jesus. When he spoke, it was like a, a rolling wave. And the crowds listening They were the hush at the end of the wave. Because when he spoke and you were there in his presence, there was no doubt in anyone's mind he was the one. What have I done?
You see, Jesus knew from the beginning that Judas would betray him. And yet Jesus loved Judas enough that he still gave him the opportunity to follow him. You see, Jesus turned Judas' life upside down. Judas followed Christ wherever he went. He was with the disciples. In fact, he was in charge of the money that came into Jesus' ministry. Jesus entrusted him with the money, knowing that Judas was going to betray him. Judas followed Jesus wherever he went, but he followed him in the flesh, not so much in the spirit. You see, Judas believed that Jesus was the Savior of the world. He believed it. He really believed that Jesus had come to save the world. He believed that Jesus was the fulfillment of prophecy and that he would become the king of the Jews. And because Judas believed that, he was willing to follow Jesus wherever he went. But the problem is, is Judas did not follow Jesus as Lord. He followed him as Savior, but he did not follow him as Lord. We know that Judas betrayed Jesus. He gave him up for death for a bag of money. Judas betrayed Jesus. But the question today is, don't we do the same thing at times? Don't we betray Jesus sometimes on a daily basis? You see, we say in church on Sunday mornings or Wednesday nights that we love Him and we, we worship Him. We may even get up in the morning and pray to Him. But there are times in our lives that we turn our back on His voice, on His instructions, and on His will for our life. There are many times in our lives that we betray Jesus just like Judas did. But the good news is, is that Jesus says, you're still worth it. Knowing that we're going to betray him, knowing that I would betray him, Jesus still looked at me and said, you are worth dying on the cross for. And he's saying that to you this morning. He understands you're going to fail. You're going to struggle. You're going to betray him at times. But he said, you are worth it. This is something that we can learn from the life of Judas. It wasn't a complete loss. Sometimes we get tired of waiting on Jesus to do what we think he needs to do. Sometimes we get tired of waiting on Jesus to do things the way we think he should. But I can tell you that God is God alone. He knows the end from the beginning. He knows every little detail along the way. And in order for us to fully follow Jesus as our Lord, we must fully put our trust in him. If you can relate to Judas today, I want to encourage you, maybe it's time to make Jesus your Lord, not just your Savior. In doing this, He will turn your life upside down. Next, I would like us to look at the life of Mary. He came with specific instructions. Use it wisely. My grandmother said, it is only for the most special occasion. It had been a gift from her mother who told her the same thing. Only for the most special occasion. I held it for years, not knowing what could be special enough for this. Until It was six days before Passover. He was reclined, his feet towards me. Around him, his followers. I too was a follower, at first at a distance. But he invited us. The women, women, really everyone, to come near to hear his stories of God's curious kingdom. 
That night, I gathered my perfume from its safe hiding place. The room crowded with men. No one noticed me. Without hesitation, I broke open the lid of the bottle. The perfume drenched his feet. With a slight smile, he, he looked at me. And then I did something I had not planned. I covered, I covered his feet with my hair, washing them with my tears. I had no choice. He was Messiah, worthy of anointing. This, this was the celebration that everyone hoped for, of who we hoped for. I kept the bottle and the memory. The perfume was not wasted. He, he was the most special occasion. You see, Mary was a prostitute. Mary lived a dirty life. She, she had a bad past. Mary was delivered from many demons. Mary was delivered from much of her past and her present circumstances. You see, Jesus has the ability to see beyond the mistakes in your past. You may be watching this today and you may be saying, man, you don't know my story. You don't know my life. You don't know what I've done. But can I tell you that there is no past too great for Jesus to put under the blood. Your past must not define you. Jesus saw past, Mary's past, and turned her life upside down. And in return, Mary offered God her everything. Mary was so thankful that God had set her free, that God had delivered her, that she was willing to offer God her everything. Are we there this morning, church? Are we to the place where we're saying, God, you can have it all. I don't care what it costs. I don't care what it takes. You can have it all. The perfume that she anointed the feet of Jesus with was very costly. But it was the least valuable gift that she would give him because Mary gave Jesus her entire life. Mary's life got turned upside down. And because of that, she became a devout follower of Jesus Christ. She would follow him when he would travel. She would go. She would pre prepare meals for them. She would serve them. And Mary became part of Jesus' team. If you relate to Mary's story, I want to encourage you today. Never look back. I don't care where you were a year ago, a month ago, a day ago, or an hour ago. Do not look back back. Your past is the past. It's history. You must leave your past behind you. You do not have room to carry it with you. You must pick up your cross today and follow him. You don't pick up the cross from yesterday or a year ago. You pick up today's cross and you follow Jesus. Never let your past define you. Give God your past Give him your present and give him your future. In doing so, he will turn your life upside down. Next, I want to consider Peter. Right here. This is where Jesus was kneeling when they uh, came and grabbed him. 
Um, and I, I, I came in from this direction with my sword drawn and I cut off the ear of the servant of the high priest. I reacted exactly the way Jesus told us not to. And Jesus, he picks up that man's ear. He puts it right on his head, like it had always been there. But that's what he did. Jesus was always fixing people's messes. <laughs> you know, um, I said I didn't know him that night. Three times. Three times. I denied my friend. He told me I was going to do it before I even did it. And like an idiot, I argued with him. <laughs> but he was right. <laughs> He's always right. He told us he was going to die before he died. But you know what he did? You know what he did when he came back to life? <laughs> that morning when he came back to life, gave me the opportunity to tell him I loved him. Three times. Three. He knew, he knew that was my greatest regret. But that's how he does it. When it settles here, it changes here. And that turns the past upside down. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what happened that night because of what happened that morning because he beat death. Death. He is alive. <laughs> Alive! <laughs> you see, Jesus found Peter in the midst of a desperate situation. There may be someone listening this morning, and you may be saying, you know what, I'm in the midst of a desperate situation. You have no idea how great the need is in my life. But can I tell you that Jesus sees your need, whether it's spiritual, financial, emotional, whatever it is, God is ready to meet your need. Wherever you are today, allow God to turn your life upside down by meeting your needs. He wants to do that for you today. But Peter was in a desperate situation. Desperate times call for desperate measures. And Jesus will go to desperate measures in order to meet your desperate need. Peter was a fisherman. He did this for a living. This is, this is what he did all the time. And him and his friends were out fishing all night long, and they had thrown their nets out over and over and over again pulled him in with no fish to show for it. And Jesus saw the need, and Jesus met the need. He said, set out a little deeper and throw down your net. And they did. And God provided a miraculous catch of fish. This turned Peter's eyes to Jesus, and he recognized that he was the Messiah. 
Jesus told Peter, hey, you think that was something? You need to follow me, and I will teach you how to fish for people. I'll teach you how to fish for people. Catching fish is one thing. Catching people builds the kingdom of God. You see, Peter dropped everything. He dropped his nets and his boat and and was willing to leave everything behind and follow Jesus because Jesus had met a specific need in his life. This doesn't mean that Peter would never fish again. We read other accounts of Peter fishing. But what it means is that God opened Peter's eyes, that he was more than a fisherman. Can I tell you, it doesn't matter who you are listening to this broadcast and watching me today. I'm telling you that God has bigger plans for you than what you see right now. All you've got to do is let him turn your world upside down by following him at any cost. You see, Peter became very close to Jesus. He was in his inner circle. He walked with him. He talked with him. He slept where Jesus slept. He he shared meals with Jesus. And yet Peter denied Jesus. Not once, not twice, three times. Peter denied him over and over again. Peter denied Jesus. You see, I think we can relate to Peter at times in our life. But I want to encourage you today. Never let your emotions determine your devotion. Let me say that again. Never let emotion determine your devotion. We must be willing to serve God when it's easy. We must be able to serve God when it's hard. We've got to be able to serve God when it's popular and serve God when no one else is. We must serve God when everyone is looking, and we must serve God when we are all alone. And in doing so, God will turn your life upside down, and you will begin to see His plan unfold for your life. God came, lived died and rose again to turn your life upside down. Can somebody say amen? Next, I want us to look at the church. Today we are celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The resurrection was not just a simple event in history. The resurrection is something that still affects us today because the resurrection gives us the power to turn our world upside down. It gives you and I the power to do what God has called us to do in order to see our world turned upside down. We are living in the midst of a pandemic that has swept the face of the earth. And a result that has come from this, as many people have turned their eyes to Jesus Christ because the church has broke free from the walls of the buildings that we meet in. We have taken our gospel to the airways all over the face of the earth and people are coming to know Him. People are coming to hear about Him and God is turning our world upside down. He will use the most desperate circumstances in in order to turn our world upside down. God didn't cause it, but he'll use it. The same power that rose Jesus from the dead now lives in you and I. And we've got to make sure that we're using that power to turn our world upside down. You see, when Jesus died on the cross, it seemed like all hope was lost. Man, there are times in your life where it seems like if Jesus doesn't come through, there's no hope. If Jesus doesn't make a way, there is no way. But I'm here to tell you this morning that He is still the miracle worker. He is still the way maker. He is still your provider. He is still your healer. He is still your deliverer. And He is still here to turn your life upside down. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah. Luke chapter 24, verse 1 through 12 says this. But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they went to the tomb, taking the spices they had prepared for him. And they found the stone was rolled away 
from the tomb. But when they went in, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were perplexed about this, behold, two men stood by them in dazzling apparel. And as they were frightened and bowed their faces to the ground, the men said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and on the third day rise again. And they remembered his words. In returning from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the rest. And listen to this in verse 10. Now it was Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary the mother of James and the other women with them who told them these things to the apostles. It says, but these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. Why would this be? Why would it seem like an idle tale when these men and women had walked and talked and lived with Jesus, ministered with Jesus, became close to him in the inner circle, who had heard Jesus prophesy about his death, burial, and resurrection? I can tell you this morning, it's because they lost hope. The Jesus that came and turned their world upside down was now in the grave. But there was one man, Peter. He rose, in verse 12, and ran to the tomb. Stooping and looking in, he saw the linen cloths by themselves. And he went home marveling at what had happened. Just when the disciples thought there was no hope, Jesus was busy turning their world upside down. You see, he wasn't just sleeping in the tomb. Jesus was not just taking a little nap or a little rest. He didn't go to heaven to spend eternity. No, he was working, and he was busy turning their life upside down. Can I tell you this morning, never give up on God. Even if it seems like your promise is in the grave, God has a plan, and he will make a way. Put your hope in God. Put your trust in God. You see, Jesus arose. He walked with them, talked with them, and eventually ascended into heaven. And then it became the church's responsibility to turn their world upside down. Consider Paul and Silas. Acts 17, 1 through 6 says, Now when they had passed through Amphipolis and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica, where there was a synagogue of the Jews. And Paul went in, as was his custom, and on three Sabbath days he reasoned with them from the Scriptures, explaining and proving that it was necessary for the Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead, and saying, This Jesus, whom I proclaim to you, is the Christ. And some of them were persuaded and joined Paul and Silas, as did a great many of the devout Greeks, and not a few of the leading women. But the Jews were jealous, and taking some wicked men of the rabble, they formed a mob, set the city in an uproar, and attacked the house of Jason, seeking to bring them out to the crowd. And when they could not find them, they dragged Jason and some of the brothers before the city authorities, shouting, Listen, these men who have turned the world upside down have come here also. You see, Jesus died on the cross and he rose from the dead and he gave us forgiveness and the power that we need to turn our world upside down. The question I want to ask you today, is the church being the church? Are we being true disciples? Are we making an effort to turn our world 
upside down for Jesus Christ. He said, even greater things you're going to do, you're going to love the unlovable. You're going to serve. You're going to give. You're going to do all that God has called you to do. And I want to encourage you today to join with me to make an effort to turn our world upside down. We have been commissioned. We have been commanded. And we have been empowered. Watch this short clip with me as we close this morning. I've been waiting to tell you something. It started with the fisherman. He taught them a new way of life. He turned everything upside down to make it right side up. Forgive seven times? Try 70 times seven, he said. Just be nice? No. Give it all over, whatever is asked of you. Reach over the tracks. Yeah, go to that part of town. <laughs> Cling to the eternal and shake off the chains of this earth. Sin messed everything up the whole world, but he made it right. Our Father, who is in heaven, holy and honored is your name. Your kingdom, it's come. I'm pledging my life to bring it closer and closer, to show the power of your divine love, to declare deliverance from death and sin. To all people, to each race in every language. Making disciples of all nations, I'll own my responsibility, go all in, and make it real in my corner of the world. The authority Jesus has already been given. The kingdom that will come on earth as it is in heaven. An everlasting dominion that will never pass. Because he beat death. Coming as the king of the Jews and finishing it all as the king of the world. His throne and authority are sovereign. You heard right. Forgiveness without boundaries. Hope in all circumstances. And a peace that passes understanding. Because death is conquered, eternal life is established. That's why we keep going. Why I keep telling. The Alpha and the Omega. The beginning and the end. The root. The offspring. The bright morning star. Baptizing in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. From street to street. Nation to nation. He is the King. Power and glory belong to Him. His kingdom will have no end. There's room for you and room for me. Room for everyone who calls on the name of the King. And his name is Jesus, the name above all names. The first and last. The one and only. And he loves you. And he loves you. He loves you. And he loves you. And that is what I've been wanting to tell you. You are called to be a world changer. You are called to turn your world upside down. You are called to make a difference in your communities, in your home, and around the world. Would you pray with me this morning? Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you that you died on the cross, that you rose from the dead, and that you live forever. God, today, I pray that we will make an effort to turn our world upside down in the name of Jesus. I pray that you help us to love the unlovable. God, that you help us to bring hope to the hopeless, that you help us to bring healing to the sick, recovery of sight to the blind. God, I pray that you will help us to free the oppressed in Jesus' name. God, I pray that you will help us to make a difference in the world that we live in. God, in our homes, in our communities, in our schools, in our workplaces, God, I pray in the name of of Jesus, that we will be the light of Christ, that we will be the resurrection power dwelling on earth, God, that we will truly make a difference in the world that we live in. Help us to turn our world upside down for you and your kingdom. In Jesus' name, everybody shouted, amen. Thank you so much. God bless you and have a happy Easter. Hey, thank you so much for joining us for this year's Easter service right here at Unity Church Online. One of the greatest ways that we can celebrate Easter is by observing communion together as a church family. We practice open communion. Therefore, if you are a born-again child of God, 
we believe that you can take communion and celebrate with us. If you're watching, I'd like for you to grab the communion that we provided for you this week at the church, or you can grab some bread and some juice and, uh, and partake with us. But if you have the prepared communion cups, you can pull back the first layer and take the bread in your hand as we prepare to take together. The Bible says on the night that Jesus was betrayed, that he took the bread and he blessed it. He thanked God for it. He broke it and he gave it to his disciples. And he said, this is my body. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. As we take the bread together, we are partaking with the body of Christ. We don't believe this is the body. We believe it represents the body of Jesus Christ. We're going to take communion together this morning. And as we do, I want you to be reminded of the scriptures that say, by his stripes, you are healed. Jesus' body was broken so that yours doesn't have to be. God wants to bring you the healing that you need today. If you are sick, if you need healing, or if you want to stand in the gap for someone else that needs healing, I want to encourage you to take and receive this promise today. Father, in Jesus' name, God, I am so thankful that we can join together today and partake of communion. God, I ask you that you will bless this time. God, as we take a moment to remember the price that you paid on the cross of Calvary, God, I pray, Lord, that your healing power will flow through every person that is sick under the sound of my voice. God, that they will experience the healing virtues that only come from knowing you as our Lord and Savior. Today we hold the bread and we prepare to take the bread. God, and we do this in remembrance of you. In Jesus' name, everybody said, amen. Would you take the bread with me this morning? same way Jesus took the cup and he blessed it and he thanked God for it and he said this is the cup of the new covenant as often as you do this do this in remembrance of me as we prepare to take this cup this morning I'd like for us to take a moment and examine our hearts and ask God to show us if there's anything within us that should not be there that he would cleanse us of those things and forgive us of those things let's take a moment Also, you could be listening today, and you may say, I've never made Jesus Christ my Lord and Savior. Well, can I tell you, friend, today is your day. He's here to turn your world upside down. He wants to be your very best friend. He wants to be your helper, your counselor. He wants to be the one that helps you and guides you through life. He came to give you life and life more abundantly. He lived, died, and rose again so that you could have life forevermore. If that's you this morning, I'd like for you to repeat this prayer after me. 
Dear Jesus, thank you for loving me. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. I thank you that you rose again on the third day so that I could have life forevermore. Today, I ask you to wash me, cleanse me, make me new. Forgive me for my sins. I want you to be my Lord, to be my Savior, and my very best friend. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer and you meant it with all of your heart, I can tell you that heaven is having a celebration over you today. This is what it's all about. He came to turn your world upside down. So as we get ready to take the cup, we are reminded that it is the blood of Jesus that washes us, cleanses us, and makes us new. It is the blood of Jesus that gives us freedom. We don't have to live according to the past anymore. We have a hope and a future that God is going to fill us with His grace, His power, and His mercy to do all that He wants us to do. Would you take the cup together this morning? Thank you so much, God, for what you've done. God, I thank you that you paid the price so that we wouldn't have to. God, I thank you that we get to live with you for all of eternity. God, I'm thankful today for the hope that we serve a living and risen Savior. In Jesus' name, everyone said amen. Thank you so much. God bless you. Have an awesome day and happy Easter.